Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Audio Routing in Cubase. I'm going to be having a look at VCA tracks today. Uh, just before we set off, if I can point you at the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below, it's an awesome way to help support my channel. Now then, VCA tracks aren't as common as group tracks, but they are pretty cool and they've got some quite unique functionality to them. And in order to understand what VCA tracks do, we need to understand what link groups do. I've got a uh, two instances of Sonic selected here. And if I click the link button in the mixer, you get a similar kind of thing in the master link con um, console as well. Here it is up here. Once I press the link button, I get this link group settings option where I can specify various types of common parameter that are gonna be treated as common across all of the members of the link group. So if I select, for instance, volume, pan and inserts, and I say, okay, those two tracks have now been linked together and we get a new row in the mixer. I'll just shut this down because we've got similar kind of information in the lower window. These two tracks have now been linked together. If I move the, the volume for one track, the other moves, similarly for panning. And if I added an insert to one, uh, the insert would appear on the other track as well. I just wanna to get to the finish line first, then we'll come back and do this stuff in a little bit more detail. I'm gonna remove that link by saying unlink selected channels and the link group disappears again, it's been deleted. This time, I'm gonna right click on the tracks and say add VCA fader to selected channels. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier and it's a throwback to the days of physical mixing desks where engineers wanted a single channel strip on the mixer. They could move the volume fader and visually see multiple different other faders moving on the mixing desk. You can basically route multiple tracks into this VCA fader and control everything from there. And that's what we just did. I can now move the fader on the VCA track and you can see everything is linked. We can access that link group settings dialog from any of the drop downs referring to link one. So let's do it from here. And we're gonna edit the link group settings. The way my system's currently set up at the moment, it remembers your last state. At the moment, I don't have anything connected. So basically what's happening with this VCA fader is that it's just controlling the volume, the overall volume of the linked tracks and nothing else. Just to clarify exactly what I mean by that, I can still move the individual faders of these tracks and balance the volumes of those tracks individually, but then when I pick the VCA slider up, everything is connected. Nothing else is, if I move the pan for one of the tracks, the other one doesn't move sympathetically. Let's give myself a little bit of LR pan here. And then I'm going to go back into the link group settings. And this time I'm going to start manually overriding that behavior. So now I'm going to physically connect pan together on these two tracks. And having done that, and this is why I gave myself that little bit of left, right pan to demonstrate that when I move one of the pan settings, you can see the other one move by an equivalent amount. So they are now linked, but the volumes still aren't. Furthermore, if I go back into group settings once again, I can disconnect the VCA fader from the link group entirely by ticking this box. And did you see the volume appear? Selection was also auto enabled, but I really want to concentrate on volume here just to try to help you to kind of get clear in your mind exactly what's going on. Having disconnected this VCA fader from the tracks, there's nothing linking the volumes together anymore. We don't have that single master fader. And so Cubase figures, well, if you're not using a VCA fader to control your volumes of the link group, presumably you want to connect them together intrinsically. And so this is the default behavior. Now we're gonna ignore this automation warning for a moment. Let's just close it down and we'll come back and see what that's all about in a minute. But now when I pick up the volume sliders, you can see once again, just like when we created the link group manually, they're linked together. The link group's been grayed out, indicating that there's no overarching VCA track managing these two um, chat tracks anymore, but they are still linked together. They are still part of a link group. If I want to reconnect them to a VCA fader, the way I do that is head into the link group settings, select use VCA fader again, there aren't any VCA faders to choose from, so it's going to create a new one for me. That's perfectly fine. That's what I want it to do. And there it is again. So we've basically kind of gone round the houses to get back to the, the, the state where we've got 
a master VCA uh, fader again. Here it is. And once again, the individual tracks have been decoupled. So it's actually very intuitive. It's probably worth spending five minutes turning VCA tracks on and off to get used to how this all works. But it is actually completely intuitive. This is how you would want it to work by default. So the defaults are very intelligent, but you can override any of them at any time. If you want to link volumes together absolutely under all circumstances, you can. And now any of the volume faders are going to move all of the volume faders for all of the tracks with the VCA tracks still having overall command. So what's happening between these two volumes then? Well, they're actually being summed together. So if the VCA fader is saying plus 2 dB, all of the tracks that that VCA fader manages are going to be 2 dB louder than they would be if they weren't linked together. The reason I mentioned that is because automation works in a very similar kind of masking way as well. You've got the individual automation for the tracks themselves, but then the VCA track can overlay its own automation on top. Let's have a look at that. Just because I can, I'll create myself a new VCA track for um, these instances three and four. And you can see now it's created VCA link two. Let's open the volume automation lanes for these two tracks. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a volume automation curve for, for Sonic track number three. That's going to behave exactly as expected. Watch the volume fader for that track. And there it is going up over the course of the automation curve. Very straightforward so far. But what happens when I add automation to the VCA track? Well, it's going to be used as a mask to overlay on top of that volume automation curve that I just drew. However, Sonic 4 doesn't have any automation, so it will inherit the entire volume automation curve from the VCA track. So I'm going to draw an opposite line on the automation on the VCA track itself. And there you can see two different things. Firstly, Sonic 4, like I said, has inherited that, that, uh, that automation curve. So this isn't editable automation data. You can see I can't select that information. It's basically saying this is the automation track for the VCA. This is the automation layer that the VCA track is supplying. I personally, me, Halley and Sonic 4, I haven't got any automation to speak of, but I need to represent that this is happening. In the case of this track, however, it's an entirely different story because it does have its own automation data. And you can see in the background, there's now a composite of those two. The track itself has automation that's going up. VCA fader has automation that's going down. And you can see this composite line that represents what's actually gonna happen. So let's watch Sonic 3 as I press play. Here it's going up. And then you can see the two automations battling with each other and the, curtain, and the, the faders kind of it was dragging down and then finally the track takes over again and it's able to complete its automation curve. Well, here's the kicker. When I disconnect the VCA track, I'm going to get the option to burn that automation in. And that's what that warning was that I jumped over earlier. So let's do that again. Head up into the group settings and I'm going to disconnect the VCA fader. I'm going to say OK. See the volume checkbox got reselected again as the link group once again takes control of its own destiny. And here's this warning. So now that the VCA link two is being removed, do you want to keep the combined automation? And if we say yes, now the automation curve for Halley and Sonic three is that composite, that overlaid masked composite of the two automation lanes. If, it, if I'd said no, it would have just maintained the original straightforward linear curve that we had. Well, the reason we're talking about VCA tracks in the context of routing is because they are a fundamental part of our strategy. They're very similar in many respects to group tracks in that you've got lots of tracks being connected together and common operations being performed on them. You can nest VCA tracks within other VCA tracks just as you can with group tracks. So you should be fundamentally treating them as another audio routing option just the same as any of the others. Link groups and VCA faders are a very visual, a very kind of intuitive way to work because what you see is exactly what you get. The faders that are moving on the screen, you know, we understand the way that those things work. And obviously, like I said earlier, that 
this inherits from the world of physical mixing desks when people wanted to see what was going on and wanted to see all the faders moving simultaneously. Needless to say, we can also define all of this stuff. You know, we can call these groups whatever we want. And just to have that visual representation on the screen telling you that these groups are clustered together. This is the fader that controls them all. That may that might be a way that, uh, that you prefer to work. Okay, that'll do us for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.